The tables are warm, the wax is stacked. Lid up, vinyl out, vinyl down. Lift, slide, and place. Let's see you spinning with us today. Hey, Jake, guess what, my friend? What? We got ourselves a very special guest with us this morning. Want me to tell you about him? Go ahead, let's hear it. 30 years ago, this man produced an album that changed the way we listen to music. He also produced an album that changed the way we listen to teachers. The first day I heard the wall was the last day I went to school. <laughs> and I wrote a little song for him, goes something like this now, check it out. All right. Oh, we don't need no education. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we don't learn stuff on our own. <laughs> <laughs> the teachers leave them their kids alone. Got a Nashville sound to it. Yeah, a little bit. Hey, teacher! Okay, can we stop? Leave them kids alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Woo. All in all, I'm just another hick in the hole. It just I'm keeps going. You, That's it just keeps on going. <laughs> Woo. All in all. Just toothless hicks in the hole. And it's all thanks to our very special guest. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up as we go on the record with the one, the only, Bob Ezra. (laughs) So as a producer, what would you do to make this sound better? Erase it. (laughs) (laughs) That would make it sound much, much better. Into the ether. Welcome to the program. We're so honored to Dilly, have you here. Thank you very much. It's yes. my great. But you should, you know, people listening should see what I see sitting in this room. This is the most amazing view in Vancouver. It is quite And you lovely. guys get to see it every morning. And really you don't tell anybody. Well, we do. And then it just gets old after a while. You is know, we really? have. Yeah, well, people that come to town, uh, many people will say, whatever you do, do not come to Vancouver on a sunny day because you will never leave. Yeah. You will never leave. Yeah, yeah. it'd be crazy. Now, you're from Toronto originally. Yes. And, and pe- still. And, and, yeah, and I'm still from Toronto. I guess Toronto, you're always yes. from Toronto. Glad <laughs> you're from Toronto. And for people that don't know you, you're a record producer. You uh, produced, uh, I'm going to say, all of the great. Alice Cooper albums, uh, Pink Floyd. Uh, there's so many things. Kiss, Destroyer. I yes. mean, so many. Th- it's such a great resume. It's amazing. I guess you'd look. Well, at- thanks. Yeah. And and most recently, uh, Wave and Flag with Young Artists for Haiti, which I don't know if you guys have played yet. Canon, have you, have that, you played? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, we don't. We're a classic rock station. Well, but, it's classic. Uh, I mean, yeah. it's, it's been out for months yeah. now. <laughs> my son, my son loves it. Uh, come on, my come son on, digs it. Well, let's talk about the wall. I, this morning, I got up and turned my iPhone on, and I was in bed, and I read about you for forty minutes, and realized I had to come to work. It's dizzying. It's you. You. It's you know for forty well, years. I, it is. It's, I beat that child molesting charge. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it is. It's. It's. You. You just cannot believe how many things you've accomplished and continue to do so. And Garth Richardson, uh, who's a good friend of yours, and you have. Uh, it's Nimbus, right? The yeah, he's my partner, and we we have uh, we have a school here in yeah. Vancouver. So the, the Nimbus School of Recording Arts. So I guess you know the way the, you know everything is going, and and the way people are creating music. Uh, it's not the record companies are going; those things are going. But the thing that still remains constant is that you have to produce sound, and that will always be there. And for these well, young I think aspiring, before you, before you make sound, you have to make music. I yeah. mean, the thing that remains constant is. People have to be excellent. Mm-hmm. Yes. You just have to be excellent. And it doesn't matter what you do, whether you're a gardener or you're a rock and roll musician, you have to be excellent and people have to care about what you do. Otherwise, mm-hmm. they're not going to give you money for it. But you still make them sound more excellent than they are well, sometimes. I, you know, no? I, Isn't that the it, secret? In a way, I think I just... Uh, my job is really to help them to... Uh, using only the medium of sound to sort of capture all the energy and excitement that they get when they're up on a stage and they're live and you can see them and smell them and hear them and all that stuff. And and uh, so sometimes I have to augment a little bit what they do. And also, I think, you know, being fairly experienced at this, I can help them to uh, matriculate 
to sort of step up a notch a little bit, to, to grow a little bit, help save them some time, share some of the stuff that I know with them and stuff. So in that sense, maybe, yeah, I help them to sound a little bit better than they were yesterday, but they're never better than themselves. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Nobody can sing better than themselves. So when you stepped in the studio to make The Wall with Pink Floyd, Roger Waters, Dave Gilmour, what was the biggest challenge there? They'd already had a huge amount of success. What was your challenge as a producer? Oh, there were uh, there were many challenges. The the biggest challenge on the wall really was to to take a Roger's singular vision and um, and uh, and the material that he had written for it all by himself. Kind of, it's it was sort of Roger's basement tapes in a certain way, and to turn it into a true Pink Floyd project where the band was involved and. Um, and where other members got to contribute, and also where it kind of hung together a little bit better. And in, in its original form, it was very literally Roger's life story. And um, my feeling was that the audience, <laughs> it's how things have changed, but I said to him, you know, I don't think the audience is interested in a 36-year-old rock star. <laughs> 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 oh well, <laughs> who knew? Yeah, yeah, but but you know, at that time, thirty six, we thought that was like I hope old, I'm, yeah. old. I so, hope I die before I get old. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's amazing. So we should listen to some some Pink Floyd. The well, it's wall. playing in the background, isn't it? Yes, it is. But yeah. we're going to play. This is the vinyl we're going to play now. Ooh, what about? Ooh. Let me just ask yeah. you before we yeah. play this uh, the vinyl and start off with side one. What about vinyl sound and what about the digital sound that happens now? Is there indeed a warmth to the vinyl sound? Oh, there's no question. And so how do you describe it? um, Well, it's the difference between a real thing and a facsimile. It's the difference between a picture and what you faxed somebody else. you, You take this real thing... And through electronics, you translate it into a bunch of electronic single, si- uh, symbols and signals, and then it gets reassembled on the other side of the process. Whereas with, you know, analog sound, it's just sound. It's sound energy becomes magnetic energy becomes sound energy. You keep the essence of the thing. I feel like in the digital world, our music kind of goes through a black hole. Mm-hmm. It's weird. It mm-hmm. stops being real for a moment. And uh, just becomes numbers, and then they recreate it in another way. And something, and there is a lot of loss. And I can get into all the technology mm-hmm. with you, but I won't bother you with it. There's a lot of loss. It's flat. It's um, uh, narrower. If you notice your stereo when you listen to the the vinyl disc versus the mm-hmm. and um, and the bottom end is. Um, it's not as dense, so things like reverb and echo and stuff don't seem to go on as long. So you just you lose a lot of that kind of humanity that that was in the original music, which I think has had an effect on on people's ability to enjoy modern recording. Bob Ezrin is with us. First side, here we go. In the flesh with thin ice and another brick in the wall, part one. On vinyl with Bob, Classic Rock 101. Classic Rock 101, it's 822. Permission. You have, you have, hang on. Permission to fade. Hey, there, there it is, go. permission to fade. The producer of that record, Bob Ezrin, is our guest, and he just gave us permission to fade. We love that. And you know, he's going to be making so much money on the new Roger Waters 30th yeah. anniversary. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, he is, like, what? Can you give us some extra dough? Yeah, we're not, uh, none of us are making a nickel on this thing. <laughs> the tickets are going right. on sale this morning. And I'm so happy for Roger. That's just a wonderful thing. Do you speak? Um. Um, with Roger, have you, I, when's the last time I, you spoke well, with him? Well, we we emailed to, uh, each other about seven eight months ago or something like that. Mm-hmm. I saw him on the last go round, the last tour. Um, went to the show in Toronto, which he invited us to, and he was very specific about where he wanted my wife and me to sit in the audience, so I would see the screen exactly the right way and all that sort of stuff. He was very very nice and concerned about what I thought and and kind and. And at the same time, cutting and destructive. uh, (laughs) (laughs) I've heard that.